Gavin Newsom, much like Bernie Sanders, is excellent at facing off with hosts who either implicitly or explicitly are trying to play up divisions within the Democratic Party, which has often the effect of making Trump seem maybe like an option that should be considered, even though he should not. Uh, there are some clips from Gavin Newsom being interviewed on Fox News at the DNC. We didn't get to them last week because it was such a busy week, but I want to get to them now. Gavin Newsom is so good at laying out in simple terms the contrast in vision between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. And I won't say more. I'm just going to play this first clip and you'll see what I mean. This theme of this convention, a lot of it is about freedom. Um, you have criticism of Governor Tim Walz and how he handled COVID-19. Obviously, you took criticism about how you handled COVID-19, that there was a real crackdown on people's businesses and how they dealt with yep. things. Yep. How do you say that that was freedom? Well, I mean, in health, wealth and education, states like California outperformed states like Florida. They, they claim to be freedom states, even though they're banning books, banning speech in the boardroom, in the classroom, uh, banning women's rights, the right to choose. I mean, you want to compare a contrast pretty easy. We believe in bodily autonomy, we believe in the freedom to love, freedom to go to school without fear of being gunned down. We care more about our children than the National Rifle Association. I'll take this debate head on any day of the week on freedom. And don't forget, I was doing ads a couple of years ago on this saying, how in the hell are we losing the debate on freedom? And with respect during COVID, Donald Trump himself was out there promoting a lot of these policies, supporting this policy. I don't think that. I know that because I was. He was not supporting going after people and having neighbors snitch on neighbors. So no one about, that that wasn't about. But as it relates to the in concerns, governor, the concerns Walsh's that were case, it was. But, but all right, I'm going to leave, leave you with this. Early days Another of COVID, all the Republicans. Of us, all what Gavin Newsom is doing in a sense here is the let's cut to the results side of things. Now, Gavin Newsom has this personal controversy with regard to how covid was handled because he went to a birthday dinner at the expensive restaurant, the French Laundry, in the middle of a bunch of the restrictions. That was completely wrong with regard to uh, the way it looks. He said I was completely wrong to do that. So let's put that aside for a moment. What Newsom does brilliantly there is he cuts to the end result, which is just look at the performance. People make more money in California. We have better health outcomes. Education has better performance. You could go way further, which is innovation is dramatically better in California on the basis of new patents and trademarks and however you want to measure it. Um, and, and that's often a way to get out of the weeds because Fox hosts know what they're doing. They know how to set up the debate and how to frame a question such that it puts you on the defensive. And sometimes what you need to do, as Gavin Newsom did, is you change the scale of the discussion. You go from the 500 foot to the 30,000 foot. Now, he did another great example of that more broadly when talking about the economy. The topic of economics came up and uh, listen to what Gavin Newsom had to say. And let's have a real conversation. You want an economic policy to compare and contrast? We know what Trump's is, a 10% tax on the American people on $3.1 trillion of goods, a 60% tax on all Okay, you're talking about tariffs. He hasn't laid, all, from, he hasn't laid that's what he down supported. an all across the board tariff. <laughs> he hasn't done that yet, and well, that's not true. Here we go. Kamala Harris from California. I want to go. Okay, so and then Brett Bayer again wants to get off of that topic. It's another example of Gavin Newsom going, hey, let's zoom out for a a second left, right and centrist left wing, right wing and centrist economists have looked at Trump's tariff plan and they've estimated roughly it'll cost the average American family about three thousand or thirty five hundred bucks a year. Sure. Over the long term, as I discussed yesterday, you can argue there may be a dynamic effect where supply chains are brought back home over a period of eight to 10 or more years. And then maybe in the long run on an inflation adjusted basis, it will do something for prices that's not disastrous for the average person. That's not the effect that it would have over Trump's four year term to just do a massive dump of tariffs in this way. That's the zoom out. That's the big picture. And whether Trump wants to blame Biden for the price of eggs or whatever he's doing, you've got to zoom out and establish what that is. Then they get to crime. OK, so we're going through a bunch of these critical issues. Then they get to the issue of crime. And once again, Gavin Newsom doesn't get caught in this. Can you justify why blue states are doing X? And instead, he zooms out to when we talk about crime, 
Why are we even talking about blue states when it's the red states with the higher crime rate? Did Prop 507 in California, which is coming under a lot of criticism. Which is 507. I know a lot of propositions. I've never heard of 507. <laughs> the, 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 the writing of how the prosecution for small crimes. Oh, Prop 47. 47, I'm sorry. Yeah, which is, by the way, the 10th toughest threshold in the United States of America, meaning you can steal up to $950 of goods and it will be charged as a misdemeanor. You can steal 2,500 in the state of Texas. Why you're not focusing on those other 40 states is behind me. That's the critical line. Trump at every speech now. He goes, you know, these shoplifters, they're going into a CVS in California with a calculator and they're saying, oh, I found nine hundred and fifty dollars worth of stuff and I can just take it now, of course, and I can just take it is wrong. It's the threshold for being charged as a misdemeanor rather than a felony. But Gavin Newsom brilliantly points out the threshold is twenty five hundred dollars in Texas. You can steal more stuff in Texas and it will be charged as a misdemeanor than in California. Why are you talking about California? On me, 10th toughest Do you felony think, threshold in the United States you of America. Think that the That's pitch a fact that she was a tough prosecutor in California. Is See, now Brett Bayer has to bail. Brett Bayer has he cannot put any response forward when Gavin Newsom points out, yeah, the 950 is the 10th lowest threshold in the country and the threshold in Texas is way more lenient. So Brett Bayer just goes on to something else. You remember her primary for president? She was attacked from the left for being too tough, for being prosecutor, for having a prosecutorial mindset. Uh, so look, I mean, all these things, this is all fair game. Uh, but at the end of the day, she's got a record of accomplishments as being part of the Biden Harris administration. We've seen inflation tamed down to 2.9%. No one's denying the inflation scars. No one's denying what's happened around the world with a few exceptions around the globe as it relates to the impacts of COVID in supply chains, a war in Ukraine and the impacts that's had on the global economy. But no country has done better and no investments have been made comparable anywhere in the world. So this is this is very, very good stuff from Gavin Newsom. And he rightly points out, wait a second. The right says, oh, Kamala Harris wants to defund the police and do all these things. But the criticism from the left has been she's too strict when it comes to policing and prosecution. She's she's very much the opposite and right and left conflicting on what's bad about Kamala Harris. And Gavin Newsom does a really good job of laying that out. And by the way, I like that he that he mentions this is all fair game. You know, Brett, if these are all topics that are absolutely fair game, if you were right about the facts, you happen not to have the facts on your side. And that is an excellent, excellent approach. So I hope we see Gavin Newsom uh, more as a, a surrogate in these environments. Gavin Newsom is excellent on Fox News. Pete Buttigieg is excellent on Fox News. And, you know, we we often hear the criticism uh, that the left has no bench, has no bullpen. Uh, there's a serious, serious bullpen right now. Everybody from Gretchen Whitmer and Gavin Newsom, Josh Shapiro, Pete Buttigieg, Jasmine Crockett. I mean, pe people of all geographical uh, origins, um, of all kind of like employment and and uh, uh, working backgrounds. It is a deep bench right now. And Gavin Newsom is excellent. So let's take a very quick break. If you're looking forward to the Trump Harris debate. It may not be happening. I'm going to tell you after the break what the latest is with that. 